So recently we've talked quite a bit about the start of the Clone Wars. We've discussed the Separatist Crisis and the Battle of Naboo. But one thing that I've mentioned a couple times is the size of these corporate defense forces. Today we'll take a look at the history behind the droid army of the Separatists, and their origins as corporate defense forces. I'm Colin, and this is Sci-Fi Deep Dive. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, to head down below and hit that subscribe button. So the droid army of the Confederacy of Independent Systems was a massive military force. Over the course of the Clone Wars, it amassed, according to some sources, billions of troops. Now, I've discussed the Separatist Crisis a lot on this channel, and there's one element that hasn't really been touched on nearly enough, and that is the history of the Separatist military. The droid army of the Confederacy of Independent Systems has a long and interesting story, tracing all the way back to several corporate defense forces. So let's begin with these corporations. So as I mentioned in my Separatist Crisis video, the Outer Rim for a couple hundred years was completely unpoliced by the Republic. It also meant no Republic fleets keeping trade safe from things like piracy. So, in those regions, piracy was kind of rampant. And in response, a lot of these companies built defense forces to protect their trade ships. It started with a few battle droids on board to protect against boarding actions, but slowly they added more and more weaponry and built a larger and larger ground force. For example, the Trade Federation army that we see in the invasion of Naboo can really tie its origins back to repelling borders on board Trade Federation ships in the Outer Rim. And those ships themselves also received some armament. The Trade Federation would often add small point defense lasers and even some turbo lasers to ward off attacking pirates. But while the Trade Federation did bring a massive droid army and the imposing Lucreholt class battleships to the Separatist military, they weren't the only major supplier of Separatist equipment. There were other companies operating in the Outer Rim that had their own standing militaries. Let's talk about the Intergalactic Banking Clan. The Intergalactic Banking Clan used a lot of military hardware during the days before the Clone Wars. One of the most notable and interesting uses of this equipment was the Hailfire Tank which we see for the first time during the Battle of Geonosis. However, before the war, it had a very interesting role as debt collection. These tanks were used to intimidate people who owed the banking clan into paying their debts. That's right, they used tanks with huge batteries of missiles mounted to their backs as a form of debt collection. And obviously, when war broke out, these tanks came in handy fighting Republic forces. We see something similar with the Techno Union and their Persuader class tanks, also known as snail tanks, which we see once again prominently used during the Clone Wars, but does have a lot of history before the war in debt collection. And when we look at the navy of the CIS, we see something kind of interesting. Well, some ships are clearly created during the war for military purposes, things like the Recusant class and Providence class vessels, for example. Other ships predate the war and serve purposes within corporate fleets before the outbreak of hostilities. Obviously, the most prominent example is the Lucreholt class battleship, which served as large cargo vessels for the Trade Federation. However, as early as the Battle of Naboo, these cargo vessels were being converted into straight-up battleships. And as I've mentioned in a previous video all about the Lucrehulk, these vessels' massive carrying capabilities made them a real threat during the war. But there's also another vessel which is fairly common in the Separatist fleet whose origins tie back to these corporate forces. And that is the Munificent Class Frigate, also sometimes known as the Intergalactic Banking Clan Ship or the Banking Clan Comms Ship. These vessels were used often as mobile relay stations. Their expansive network of antennas could be used to relay communications around the galaxy, basically allowing the banking clan to not really rely on any communication infrastructure outside of the infrastructure that they own with their own ships. And with the state of the Outer Rim, it makes sense that they would want to arm and armor these ships to protect them against piracy and other roving groups in the Outer Rim. And of course, like most Separatist military vessels that predate the war, when the war began, many of them had weapon systems added to them. So it's kind of interesting how all of this factors into the surprisingly diverse military of the CIS. We see them use a variety of different ground, air, and space vehicles. And while some units seem incredibly common, like the standard run-of-the-mill battle droids, others are really unique within the Separatist military, and a lot of that ties back to their different origins. After all, the Separatist Alliance really is just this group of companies agreeing to sort of oppose the Republic. Now, them banding together led to an event known as the Separatist Crisis, and I have an entire video on that. If you want to learn more about it, I'll leave a link up here to that. And I want you to let me know down in the comments what you think the most interesting backstory for a piece of Separatist ground hardware is. Do you like the story behind the Trade Federation's defense forces for defending their ships, or do you prefer some of the ground vehicles that were originally intended for debt collection? And last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, head down below, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell icon so you get notified when I upload new videos. So for Sci-Fi Deep Dive, I'm Colin, and I will see you next time.